Welcome into Inside LAFC Podcast. I am Max Bretos in the midst of a very exciting week here for the black and gold. Coming off the big Galaxy victory. Getting ready for the, I guess you'd call it a rivalry game against the Portland Timbers. A guy who could answer that and he will later. Back on the show, co-host Stephen Beta Shore. How's it going, Beta? It's going well. It's, uh, it's a good week, good weekend, good result for LAFC against... You know, big rivals, so that's always fun to watch. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you. Yeah, oh, always good to see you. And you always pick good weeks. It's the feel good hour here with Stephen Betashore, who uh, of course LAFC's fan base knows and loves. We will preview the Timbers' big game, certainly based on what we saw this weekend. We'll also be joined by Hugo Loris, the number one goalkeeper there for LAFC. It's an interesting time for goalkeepers. We'll indulge you in that as well. But let us start with uh, the showpiece. And at big three points, if this goes any other direction, it could have gone uh, south for LAFC and a lot of questions, but now it's a feel-good It's a feel good camp. It's a, it, it's, you, can, you can certainly see it. And you, Beta, were here with this club from the beginning. We knew this was going to be a big rivalry, and it's culminated into this LAFC, uh, the kings of the city, and that carries a lot of weight in L.A. Yeah, it sure does. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things, obviously, when you're in such close proximity to another team, you're going to you're going to bash, you're going to butt heads. And um, from the beginning, from the first game, uh, we just didn't like each other. The way that one went down, obviously, I was on the field for that when Slotan's first game and it just every game just escalated from there. And so uh, it was a good result for, for LAFC last game two one. Uh, you know, maybe not the prettiest obviously they'd like to have the ball more but they got the result they had better chances for sure and uh they won the game they got the three points and now they have bragging rights till the next game we spoke to your guy harvey last week and i'm curious to get your thoughts you, you touched on it there about where this rivalry started and it's culminated here but that first game i mean you knew you took that field you see the supporters in the stands and then all i mean how quickly did you know i go this this is the real deal I mean, you knew it before the, the the first whistle even blew. That first game uh, in Carson, when we had, I don't know how many, but the whole uh, LAFC Army 3252 was there, uh, and they were all in the camo. Like, it was amazing. So we knew, man, this is, this is something before the first whistle even blew. Um, and then we go up 3 nothing. then, oh, I don't want to go back into it, but then we somehow give that up. It was... It was a good start to an incredible rivalry. I think uh, the league, the fans, other teams, everyone just tunes into these games because it's just excitement like Hollywood. They can't even write this stuff uh, better. It's so good. Feels like it's getting bigger, bigger and better every game. It felt like the eyes of the world, certainly with the Apple TV deal, were set on BMO Stadium for this. And the game went off, and we always have goals, and we had three more goals. It was a very good defensive effort. We'll get to that in the second half. But let's talk about the way LAFC have played. They had 32% possession, which has to be one of the lowest totals they have had in their history, yet they doubled the Galaxy shot total. They doubled the Galaxy shot on goal total. I believe... I believe, no, I can I can uh, confirm coming into this game, LAFC leads MLS in both those categories. How could we how could we explain this? Yeah, I mean, you look at the the front three between Bogus Oliveira and Buanga, like those are incredible players alone, single handedly. But now the three of them up top, it's just so much threat, so much pace. Unbelievable one v one. I know Bogus plays a bit of a false nine to help in the build out, but when you're able to defend in that blow low block, the opposition you're kind of stranded, like in these one v ones with a ton of space to defend. It's it's difficult, and so when someone like uh, Boanga gets the ball, you know, as an outside back, it's not a fun spot to be in when you when you have that much space to cover in front of you and behind you, and so that's what's going to happen. You're going to give up a lot of shots, which Galaxy did. They gave up a lot of chances. Um, you know, fortunately for them, LAFC only scored two of them. I think they on another night they could have scored four or five. Uh, you know, the Bonga one at the very end, that's a sitter that, you know, 
I could have made that one beta. Not even nine out of ten. Ten out of ten times this guy scores. I can't, I still can't believe he missed that. But you know, these are very good players, and you know, I'm gonna give Steve Trundle credit the way they played. They got the early goal uh, goals, I should say, and then they kind of sat back and defended and didn't give space um, for for Peck and Pencil to go in behind because those are also very fast and quick players. And you can see they were kind of frustrated by that. And I want to give a shout out to. Valencia and Hollingshead as outside back myself, they did an incredible job. I think those are the two biggest threats for Galaxy, and they really limited their chances. So, yeah, it was exciting. Well, the the fullback uh, committee always sticking up for each other, as we saw here. P let's put you in that situation, because when you played for LAFC, it was a much different looking black and gold, the way the fullbacks. But you've played in games where you're saying, especially taking a, a lead early on, where yeah. you said, okay, we're going we're gonna to play a little lower block. You take me into the responsibility that you saw as a fullback that Palencia and Hollingshead had to do not only to maintain that line, but to prevent passage for these two ex excellent wingers that the Galaxy have who have been scoring and been so good up to this game. But in this game, they were uh, pretty invisible. Yeah. Yeah. And and again, I, that's why I mentioned Steve Trondolo and maybe that was their game. Another fullback. Yeah, another fullback, exactly. You know, and and I'm sure he's talked to to Hollingshead and Palencia and Campos when he was here, uh, playing. Like, look, this is what we're looking for you guys to do in different games, different moments. We're gonna have the ball more, and you're gonna be able to get higher in the attack and and move freely. That's at least in 18 and 19 when I was with LAFC. That's kind of what it was like. Um, we had a lot of the ball. We created a lot of chances, but we'd also leave ourselves vulnerable to the counterattacks. That's just the way we played. We wanted to be high octane, uh, high offense, high attack, um, and exciting and entertaining, right? Uh, this is a little bit more composed. All right, you know what? We'll take our chances. We're going to have chances, but let's not, uh, you know, let's not leave ourselves so vulnerable to the counter. And you saw Hollingshead, you see Palencia kind of sitting back, keeping everything in front of them, and not just them, the whole back line, the whole group, really. And and how many chances did Pencil or Peck have? And those are two of the best players for Galaxy. I want to say the 75th minute was the first real chance. that I was like, oh, there's there's Pencil. He kind of, you know, uh, I think he beat Hollingshead down the line uh, and, and got a shot or a cross in. I was like, oh, finally, after 75 minutes. So they did a really good job of kind of limiting those chances for the Galaxy. Aaron Long did a job on Dan Jolich, and everyone was worried about this game because the Galaxy were unbeaten, scoring goals, three goals, three goals, two goals, tons of chances, and then they didn't get them. Is there something in this way? Because remember, the Galaxy and LAFC played two more times. We have that 4th of July game at the Rose Bowl, and then they'll play there at Dignity Health Sports Park as well. These are going to be two teams I think they are going to be in the playoffs did the Galaxy, did the LAFC show something here that they can find a way to frustrate and get a result against their big rivalry, which makes everyone happy, yeah. and possibly a team that they could see down the road in the postseason? Yeah, I, I think so. Obviously, Galaxy were undefeated up until this point, but I think LAFC might have given out a bit of a blueprint on how to defend them. Um, you know, example, if you watch... Uh, a few games back, St. Louis versus Galaxy, and Galaxy crushed them because of the way St. Louis played. Such a high line, pressing, full field. Uh, you know, St. Louis's back line was pretty much at midfield. That's that's 50, 60 yards of space in behind that you have to defend. And against someone like Pencil, who is just blazing fast, I think it was the fat, first or second fastest player in MLS this season, you don't want to defend that space behind you. You want to keep the game in front of you. So I think maybe other teams are going to catch on to how LAFC played this. And, you know, everyone loves to have the ball. But honestly, you want to have results over having the ball. Because um, you can't say LAFC didn't have chances. They had chances. So we'll see. We'll see if teams watch this and, and say, hey, maybe we're going to try this. And sit a little lower block um, and defend in either a block of six or block of eight. And then and counter and see if we can yeah. get some results. You like to be a little more advanced as a fullback. You don't want to be too far back, personally. Speaking to Beta here. Yes, absolutely. I, I love to attack. But <laughs> as a defender, I took pride in getting those clean sheets. So I have to say that. 
Yeah, this isn't Showtime LFC from the years past. We get that. But you know what's exciting to supporters is beating your rival. And they did that. They were very composed. They were practical. And they got the result. I want to touch on the direction of this rivalry. I felt it. I, I didn't know what was going to happen here, Beta. Because would it be an, a good game? But instead, it, it, it felt like it took another step towards it. The city... You saw supporters. You saw a big swath of Galaxy fans there. It was very well behaved. We want to give credit to uh, Jimmy Lopez and Pat Aviles, who uh, is, are involved with the supporters, and it kept a very pleasant situation. There's obviously a lot of banter going on, but just from those those beginnings, it wasn't humble. We talked about what happened in that first game to here. Have you seen that? Where's that growth uh, of a rivalry that, it's not if, but when it becomes the biggest rivalry in the sport because the two teams reside in the same city. How have you seen the evolution of this Clasico? Yeah, I mean, it, it started off with a bang, but it's it somehow every game, you can just see it. They're not exchanging pleasantries after matches. They're, it's a genuine, I hate to use it, but a little bit of a hatred for each other. Just because you hear a lot of chirping about, you know, we have this many championships, you guys are, you know, new shiny toy and and back and forth you guys are in carson not in la and it's just it's it's not friendly banter it's good banter uh but there's a bit of hatred there and that's what you like that's what you want that's what the league wants uh fans love it everyone tunes in i remember as a player you know all all these friends that i have on other teams are texting me like oh we're, we're tuning in we're tuning in and everyone wants to watch these games just because of that rivalry it's a good match two good teams you know um it's not like one's at the bottom of the table one's at the top you know two top teams playing against each other so you'd love to see it that's important right i i say that and some supporters go no we want to beat the galaxy when they're rock bottom we want to <laughs> humiliate them but you me, always want to beat them you always you want to beat them but as a player you want them to be good like they were in 2019 in the playoff game you yeah. want them to be uh, a, a target is that right or is it just good we're going to run through these guys you always want to beat them but you're spot on when in 2019 we hadn't beat them yet we wanted them to make it so that we can play them and beat them for the first time in the playoffs and knock them out so it's like man you guys hadn't beaten them yet and you wanted to play them absolutely like that's what that's what you love to hear that's what you love to see confidence and just that's what rivalries are rivalries are about like, you want to beat your enemy and knock them out. So, yeah. It was – it was. we talked to Harvey about that, and it was, like, going to be the Galaxy or Minnesota, whoever won that game for would play LAC. Were people asking you who you would prefer? Oh, yeah. People were asking for sure. And you and said, you bring on the Galaxy. You don't root for someone. I've Like, that's the weirdest thing because then the next week you're playing for Wait a second. I was just rooting for this. No. And especially the Galaxy. You're not going to root for them. But if we had our, our pick – you know, we, we wanted Galaxy. We wanted that. Um, you know, it was just, it was a moment of redemption because we hadn't beaten them at that point. We've had many goals scored. We've had many leads, but no victories. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Those three points. So, yeah, we got the three points. We got the, the win in the playoffs and knocked them out. So that was all worth it. I'll, I'll get back to the game really quickly. We'll spin it forward. Uh, Hugo Loris, to me, may, in – Probably his best game. I mean, just very complete with the distribution, some big balls out of the back, two or three key saves. He got didn't get the clean sheet. I thought it was Sergi Palencia's best game. I thought it was Kike Oliveira's best game. I thought it was <laughs> Timothy Tillman and maybe Hugo Loris. Yeah. What impresses you about LAFC's new number one? And keep in mind, they played the number one from last season, John McCarthy, and they'll play Maxime Crepeau, the number one from – Parts of 2023 and 2022 yeah. next week. Yeah. I thought a lot of, to, to mention what you were saying, I thought a lot of players had very good games. Um, but Larissa is just one of those guys where he's so calm and just does his job and doesn't make mistakes. And there's something about him. You know, I've had goalkeepers in the past that, you know, a little too energetic, a little too, like you give up a shot and then they lose their head and they're yelling at you. And you're just like, man, relax. You're a goalie. You're supposed to be there, and sometimes we give up shots, and you're supposed to save it. But Hugo doesn't look like he gets too riled up or too low. He's just even keel, and you can tell he has that experience. The guy's won a World Cup. Like, you know, he's been with Tottenham for how many years? Like, he has that experience. He has that 
calm nature about him as a defender, I would love that. I would love to play in front of him, just knowing that he's back there. If maybe we slip up and, and give up a shot, that, yeah, he's going to save it. So he's he's off to a good start. You had some of the micromanager goalkeepers. You had some vocal guys behind you in the past. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How was Tyler? Tyler was good. Tyler was good. I, I think because he was younger and it, it was really his first uh, gig at being a starter, he didn't have yeah. too many blow-up moments. Uh, you know, between myself, between Jordan, Laurent, even Walker, uh, we were the experience. So I don't think he ever had a, to say something to us. But I've had keepers, especially in my younger days, that just, like, lose their mind. And you want to lose your mind back at them. But it just doesn't look good. Like, Would you? There's bickering. Uh, I might have had one or two moments. I know I know Jordan. Uh, he had him last week. I'm a... And he knows this. He's he's called out some keepers as well. He'll he'll call them out, and it's not in a pleasant voice either. So I I'm, I'm shocked. I am shocked. Yeah. I thought you'd be the I thought you'd be the rowdy one, and Jordan would be the calm one. But it's I, the reverse. I want to think if you know. I might have when he started it. He started, and I jumped on the bandwagon with David Alstead. He he went off on us one time, and Jordan started, and I was like, you know what? Uh, bleep 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 too, and. <laughs> <laughs> during the game during the game yeah but just doesn't look good so I, tr I try not to do it and i know jordan's the same way it doesn't look good when you're bickering at each other but at the end of the day we're all trying to prevent goals from happening and um you know maybe goalies do it to get a little uh energy back in the in the back line so i don't know who knows goalies goalies are another breed i <laughs> I, I i don't know what to tell you beta they're out of control i'm yeah. telling you man they got to bring it down a notch we but love you go we love it you go oh. You go, what I've seen, great. Very, very calm and experienced. We will talk to Hugo Lloris in a little bit. I'll bring that up about the calmness and see what he says about it. So we'll see uh, if that's part of his MO, his uh, yeah. description. Yeah. Let's look towards the Timbers. And I figured a great way to springboard into this conversation is with the latest installment of your favorite part of the show, Black and Gold Rewind. And we are going to look back to the LAFC Timbers game from July 18th, 2018. This was in the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open Cup. Quarterfinals. And by the way, I've spoken to a lot of supporters and a lot of staff for LAFC, their senior team, and this is going to be a strange year for the U.S. Open Cup with next pro teams. LAFC senior team is in there. According to everyone I'm talking about, they're going for it. They want to win this trophy. They haven't won it. That was the closest LAFC got. They got to the semifinals. Yeah. But tell me, why this was so important for the black and gold in not only getting an open cup game, getting into the semifinals, but building a rivalry with the Timbers team, which was a blank slate. We didn't know it was going to be a big rivalry, yeah. but it kind of became that. Yeah, that, that rivalry definitely came about organically, very naturally. It wasn't something that was forced. We were obviously first first year in the league, expansion team. We were doing a lot better than teams, other teams wanted or expected to do and portland for the most part is one of those teams that's always at the top they've got a good home stadium home fan base they they're always scoring a lot of goals they're always at the top of the table so we come in and now you're playing them in the quarterfinals of the open cup something that they were probably going for and you know we're trying very hard as you know some teams do some teams don't but for us uh, as an expansion team we were off to a good start in the regular season, but we also knew that was the first chance to win a trophy, you know, and that was important to us. Let's get this trophy and let's go for it. So we, we went for it. We gave it everything we had. Um, you know, unfortunately we lost in the semis in yeah. Houston on penalties. And so we were this close to hosting the finals in 2018. And I truly, uh, I think Philly lost to Houston that year. We would have, absolutely destroyed Philly that year at home uh, three four nothing honestly honestly that that Philly team it's not what it is now they were not good we would have crushed them and so uh going back to, to Portland we wanted to beat them and something interesting about that game was we played them the regular season maybe two or three days before and it was a zero zero game it was and we were very upset and they were chirping a little bit. And, and they be, May, you played them and they beat you 2-1. So yes. this is the third meeting and you're just in the middle of early summer. Three exactly. meetings already. 
Exactly. So three pretty quick games uh, in close succession and whatever the game was, maybe a Wednesday we played and they had the better of us at home, which, you know, we, we were off to a good start. We were doing well and they were chirping and we were pissed. We're like, all right, we're playing these guys in three days, open cup. And we're going to knock them out. And sure enough, we did. And then we were chirping after. So that rivalry, it, it really grew organically. And I think, you know, it had, it says something about that, that, that rivalry when it's, when it's built like that, just, just on the field, you know what, on the field, you guys are good. We're good. We don't like each other. And we're going to, we're going to try to knock you out similar to how we try to knock galaxy out. Oh, it's got to feel good to get him in the, the quarterfinals too. So close to the finish line. Yeah. I, I can't believe you said it about the Philadelphia union. You're convinced you make him in the final. You're going to smash him. We lost to Houston on penalties, right? I think, you know, I, I love Laurent. If he had finished the fifth kick, we would have gone to the finals. Yeah. And we would have won. Houston ended up uh, hosting that game against Philly, and they won 3 nothing, 3 nothing or 4 nothing. So if right. they crushed Philly, imagine us. We were playing at Houston, and I thought we were the better team that day. Unfortunately, went to penalties. But, you know, we were this close, this close, a penalty kick away. From Houston. So if Houston crushed Philly, yes, we would have crushed him even more. <laughs> that one stings a little bit, Bate. I'm sure it does because, I mean, we, we, at the time, you didn't know when you're going to win a trophy. Yeah. And that was it. It was there at the door. It was so close. And LAC haven't come that close in the Open Cup since. Yeah. And per personally speaking, it's the only trophy I don't have in my cabinet that I really wanted. I really wanted that one. But also, as a team for LAFC, I think if we won Open Cup or any trophy, a trophy in 2018, I think we're winning everything in 2019. I think, yeah, Supporter Shield, we won. But I think we're also, we have we have that experience. We have that confidence that, look, we won a championship. Now let's go win MLS Cup. Because I think that's what you see now with LASC. It's a little bit different. They have that experience. They know that they've won it all. They got it under their belt. You know, as a player, sometimes that's all you need. Like, you, you saw it, you've done it. Okay, now let's go do it again. So, final, sc final score of that quarterfinal game, 3-2, so it was close, LAC. Do you remember who scored the game winner? Uh, For the Open Cup game? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I want to say Vela just because he scored. He scored. He scored the 2-2, he scored the two -two, or they went up to. Dio? Marco Ureña. Yeah? Oh, Wow. <laughs> I love Marco. What a great guy. He that might be his best moment. I mean, he he was – Mark. as we know, Marco's story in 2018 was he had so many chances. He hit the post, yeah. hit the crossbar. He, he was he was snake bit a little bit. But yeah. that was the one he scored. And that must have been a great feeling because there was a game where he went for a long stretch without scoring. But he was playing so well and creating so many chances and getting a lot of assists. And we were like, we were heartbroken for him because he was devastated after one of the games. So I'm glad to hear that, you know, it was a while ago, uh, but I'm glad that he did score the game. We're going to hope to get him on this program. Uh, he was last playing in Australia. He played very well. So hope to get Marco on here at yeah. some point in the future. I know people would like to. Uh, let's talk about this Portland and preparing for this game. LAFC. You've been on when they've won these home games and you've previewed the next games. We previewed Colorado. That got away. Mm -hmm. LAFC, three away games, three losses. Without Take out the snow game. The other ones, they were in the mix for it. Yeah. Th yeah this is for all that you were able to achieve beating the Galaxy. You need to do something here, right? Against a Timbers team that has not played well. They give up a lot of goals. They're going to face Maxime Crepo. They were trailing a game 3-0 to Sporting Kansas City, came back to get a tie. I don't think they've won a game in the last four, but this is – how do we approach this if you're LAFC? You want to keep that momentum. And, man, if you can get a win over LA Galaxy and then a win over Portland, your season all of a sudden yeah. the switch is on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, it's going to be tough. I want to say they're low on confidence because you mentioned it. They haven't won the last four. Three losses, one tie, the last game against Kansas City, where they were down 3 nothing, But – as a player, I don't know if this is going to work in their favor or not. When you come back on the road, down three and tie, 3-3, three, three, get a result, that's going to give you a little confidence. It's crazy what this confidence does for players, for goal scorers, for the team. So 
LAF, LAFC should be a little weary. Like, okay, you know what? I know they're on a bad streak right now, four games winless. But they should go in there really and treat it like they're the underdog. Obviously, they're on the road. And Timbers Army, their fan base, they do a great job. And it's never an easy place to play. But they need to go there with that mindset. Like, all right, you know what? These guys are going to bring it. So we need to bring our A game. Otherwise, it's going to be a tough game. Because they are they are a good team. They have good individual players. But they're just they're leaking a lot of goals. I think they've given up 14 on the season. They've scored 14. But that's not a good recipe for results. You want to score more than you're giving up. Um, and so it's it's going to be a good game. Um, no one wants to talk about the turf, but the turf is an issue. That is home field uh, advantage. They're used to that turf. Um, but LAFC has to go in there and be ready for a bit of a dogfight um, and a tough match. If they go in there soft, thinking it's going to be an easy game just because they're on a bad four-game streak, game's over. They're, they're not, they're not going to win. So hopefully they have the right mentality. LAFC has not been historically good on the, the turf, but they, they won at Seattle in the postseason. They've had success against the Whitecaps up there last year, so I think they've kind of gotten over that hump, but that was an issue before. This is going to be an early kickoff, 1.30 local time. How do you think we the guys approach it? You know, we, we talked about the lower block and how, the, how they're going to uh, come in here, certainly on the road. If LAFC is going to play a little more, let the other team have possession at home, I would imagine similar situation away. Yeah, I think it's going to be a similar situation. Uh, I know Anthony is an incredible player for Portland. Um, you know, another guy that you don't want to give too much space. He's not as uh, fast as maybe the Galaxy wingers, uh, but he's very tricky. And so if you can play a lower block, you're going to be more compact. And that means more players around the ball. Uh, Etwesta, Illy will be able to shift over and whether that's Palencia or Hollingshead being isolated 1v1, now you're going to have 2v1 defensively, which you love to see against players like that. The tricky players, they can go left, they can go right. Uh, so I expect them to go into the lower block and try to counter. Uh, they'll have lots of chances. But, you know, again, they have to have that mentality. It's going to be a dogfight. They're going to have to put that same effort that they did this, this weekend against Galaxy on the road against Portland, in front of a big crowd, good crowd. So it's going to be a tough match. It's not going to be easy, but I think they can get the victory. Ooh, getting the first road win. We're calling yeah, it? I think so. Going off of the Galaxy, the highs of beating your rival, onto the next rival, yeah, I think so. This would be just massive. And I we have to under can't underestimate how big this is for the Timbers. And you mentioned Anthony, and they have Evander, and they have Cabecita Rodriguez, who was once connected to coming to LAFC. They uh, they have Maxime Crapo. I, I can't imagine he's he's got to be. I mean, this he had to join Portland. I mean, he circled the Vancouver game because of history there, without yeah. question. And he, look, he is beloved here. The supporters love him. Uh, I was at the Performance Center. His family showed up earlier this season, and they were you know absolutely welcome with open arms. Yeah. Uh, there's there's some good feelings there. Look, he he got injured in the biggest game, so that they'll never take that away. I think we saw that with John McCarthy too. There was a respect, even though he's an opponent. Yeah. But Maxime knows he's a competitor, right? He's gonna be like circling that calendar, going, "I'm getting this one." He for sure, as a as a former player, he for sure circled those two dates. I felt bad for him against the Whitecaps because they gave up some goals, and as a keeper, that's the last thing you want to do. So he is going to rally the troops uh, against LAFC and be like, "Guys, I'm begging you, please." Don't give up any shots. Don't give up any goals. And let's win this game. So he's going to try. He's going to try. But it didn't work against Whitecaps. So hopefully it doesn't work again against LAFC. Great stuff, Beta. Just a quick pecking order of the rivalries. Give me your top three. Obviously, Galaxy's one. Yeah. Portland, Seattle, Salt Lake. How would you put number two and three rivalry um, right now? Portland and Seattle right there. It's really just – it's out of respect because they're, they've always been so good. So I'll, I'll put Seattle just above them just because, you know, they've been a little bit better than Portland. And then I'll go Portland as three and then Salt Lake uh, four because of 2018 knocked us out. With, with <laughs> two shots on goal, but some, somehow you got three goals. I'll, I'll never let that go. Never. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry to bring it up, but I mentioned that. Because, you know, San Jose's not there. They haven't really built that rivalry with them. Um, some of the Texas teams you could think, but not quite the New York teams. No, no. Those are those are the four in that order. 
Galaxy, Seattle, Portland, Salt Lake. Everyone else, I just feel like it's just pure domination on LAFC's part. So it's not a rivalry if it's a one-way street. Stamp it. Yeah. The beta stamp of approval. Yeah. Good stuff, beta. Uh, we'll look forward to it. They play the Portland, they'll play Portland down at BMO a couple weeks after this game. So they'll have Portland out of the way and then we'll see. Maybe down the road. I think Timbers will be good down the road, but this is going to be a really good game. Appreciate yes. your time. We'll see you. We'll see you very soon as we we wax poetic and look back at the history of LAFC. Yes, always great seeing you. Looking forward to it. My man, Stephen Bader. We're going to get him out to L.A. soon, so we'll keep you tuned to that. We'll be back here on Inside LAFC. Goalkeeper Hugo Loris will join us on the podcast. That's coming next. You don't want to miss it. We are back here on Inside LAFC Podcast. A, I guess we have waited for some time, and we're thrilled to welcome in Hugo Loris, LAFC's uh, number one goalkeeper, joining us here. And Hugo, we're gonna we're, we're gonna jump around a little bit, but I gotta ask your first LAFC Galaxy game, your expectations coming in, and how how did you see it after the ninety minutes? So it's better when you win, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, true. Uh, no, but it's better than I expected. You know, uh, the atmosphere was amazing. I got my three kids uh, at the stadium and they really enjoy uh, the game and, uh, and the atmosphere. The fans are just uh, incredible and, uh, and I was uh, even more pleased for them than for myself, you know, because they deserve, they deserve this, uh, this win. You've been part of some big rivalries, obviously with your days in Tottenham Hotspur, uh, with Arsenal and multiple rivals and back in your days at, at Nice as well. We know the, the Southern French derbies. When you see a young Derby like this, uh, where where would you put it, and where what are the things it does well, and where are those things that you you see it growing? Um, yeah, I play many derbies uh, at Nice, uh, and then in Lyon, and uh, because Lyon there is a big big rival is Saint Etienne, and is one of the hottest uh, derby in France. Uh, the atmosphere is just amazing. Um, and then in, in London is a bit different because there is so much rivalry, so much clubs. The main one is the North London derby, it's Arsenal. There is also against Chelsea, against West Ham is huge. So, um, but to be honest, um, the, the Trafico is uh, belong to the, the, those type of derbies, you know, uh, you can feel the rivalry. Um, I believe that um, we play at a, at a very good level of football. Uh, it reminds me, uh, you know, a big game in Europe. And um, I think we, we showed a lot of discipline and, uh, and we could have uh, added one or two more goals. You know, I think we, 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 we deserve to, to score at least one more goal. But, um, but in terms of atmosphere, uh, the fans singing, uh, you know, from 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 the start until the end, uh, you know, it's uh, um, it give us it give us like a, an extra boost, and um, and it's it's almost like we play uh, with twelve men, you know, on the field. So, so yeah, it reminds me a lot, you know, uh, this um, this warm feeling that you can feel, uh, you know, in different places uh, in Europe. It made you reminded me with Leon and San Etienne. Do you and Denny ever talk a little? No, Denny was I don't know where still at the academy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because no, no. Uh, so I left Lyon in 2012. So uh, I never played against Denny. I watched Denny playing in the, in, in, the, in the French league, but uh, I never played against him. But um, but he also played a few derbies uh, at this time. Oh, but just do you guys talk about it and say, hey, Leon and the San Etienne, you know, when they play each other coming up? I think next season, because San Etienne is going coming to be up. normally, normally, uh, I think if the things are going right, uh, the, the, they should be in League One uh, next year, and probably we will, we will talk about the derby uh, next season, for sure. <laughs> it, it's... Does it comfort you? I mean, there's a very European contingent with this club, more so than ever before. And uh, although Denny represents Gabon, uh, grew up in France, uh, Sergi played in France, did that help your transition uh, uh, to LAFC? Well, there is a lot of, um, uh, 
I will say uh, South American uh, players also in the changing room. I, I used to be part of them, you know, in, in Tottenham, in Lyon as well, in Nice. Uh, I don't know. I, I always had a, a good connection with the uh, Argentinian, Uruguayan, Colombian, uh, and um, and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm not uh, discovering something new in the training room. It's just uh, many players from different places, but but at the end of the day, we are all together in the same training room, uh, wearing the same jersey and uh, and defending uh, our club. So, but I, I really enjoy my time at uh, at LFC, and uh, we have a great group of guys, and and uh, and I'm looking forward to to play even more games and more important games uh, in the future. On and off the field, Hugo, you strike me as very comfortable here. Like uh, you were meant to be in LA. Uh, you've been here what two months, two and a half months. What are the uh, what are the things that you've really? I mean, you've mentioned how nice, how much you appreciate on the field, but off the field, living in LA, things that you have that you've really enjoyed. Ah, it's the kind of life that uh, I really like. You know, uh, you know. Outside the field, uh, I can spend uh, a lot of time with my children and, uh, you know, playing in the garden, enjoying the sunshine, also uh, discovering, uh, you know, different places. Uh, last weekend, we, we went to San Diego, uh, um, you know, we went to yeah, Santa Monica, Beverly Hills, uh, Malibu, you know, we, we, we like to, to discover new places. California is just uh, an amazing place. And, but there's so many things to new for us that uh, we take time by uh, time by you know weekend after weekend we we try to you know to discover the area. But um, it's been really good so far. Uh, my, my children are enjoying uh, the school time as well, so that's so it's perfect. You've you've had an interesting. Uh, you're preparing to take on Portland. It's going to be a difficult foe, uh, but just. The road trips as well. We we obviously know about what happened in Salt Lake, and you were up at the altitude, of Colorado. Um, how has uh, the the road trips been? And just off the field for you, but also on the field where this team is looking to to play the way you play at home and get the similar results away. Yeah, I believe we need to, to adapt a little bit playing away from home. Uh, we need to to find the, the confidence back. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's by doing uh, easy stuff, uh, going back to basics, you know, and um, we have the quality, I'm not worried about that. Um, but it's very interesting because for me, it's completely new. Uh, going to one place, uh, from one place to another, it's like a different temperature, different uh, um, uh, condition, uh, different kind of uh, pitch, you know, uh, it's uh, uh, time difference. And uh, so it's it's quite fun and, um, and I'm still adapting, you know, to, to this kind of travel, but uh, but it's really fun and, um, and it increases, you know, the level of focus that you need uh, for that competition. And, um, and hopefully we will get uh, the right rhythm uh, to get uh, uh, more consistency into, you know, you know, in a result and in a performance. I'm curious, when, when you're at Tottenham Hotspur, how many times did the team actually uh, get on a plane with your proximity to so many London clubs? How many times did you go to airport? How many times did they take the bus? Well, I would say uh, <clears throat> you share, uh, you know, half of the team uh, you're going to fly and the other half uh, by coach, you know. Uh, so everything that is uh, near Birmingham or in London or in the south of uh, uh, England, uh, you go by coach, no, and everything up there, uh, Manchester, Liverpool, uh, Newcastle is, is by by plane. But uh, um, but to be honest, to, to compare uh, uh, that time of tra traveling is, is uh, you you need to look about European competitions and uh, of and, uh, and probably you have to <laughs> to, to go, uh, you know. Uh, uh, from uh, east to west, to west, uh, west to east uh, in Europe. So, so it's yes, uh, no, no shortage of European travel for you in your career. So obviously, that help probably helps to transition to MLS, where you have to yeah. stamp your, get on the airplane, get to the airport. My co-host uh, Stephen Betashore, we were talking about you in the Galaxy game, but throughout the season, there's a, a there's a calmness about you. Um, 
maybe not so vocal with the defenders. Very, you know, it's, it's the volume level is not too high when you're communicating. Is that something that you were always like? Is, is that an important way to, I guess, how, do, how is your best way to communicate with the defenders, especially with set pieces and all of that? Yeah. Um, so, no, I, I talk quite a lot on the field, uh, but the problem is with the atmosphere, you cannot hear, you know. So I'm more focused on my uh, defenders because I, I think I cannot reach my midfielders or, or offensive players. They are, they are too far and they can't, they can't hear me. But um, that's the way uh, I like uh, being goalkeeper, you know, bring calmness uh, and uh, try to be uh, the most efficient uh, as I can and, um, and then try, you know, to always get the right position. Uh, um, and then also uh, when we attack, you know, you are the first attacking uh, player. You need to, you know, everything start from the goalkeeper and, um, and you need to take the, the right decision, you know, when you're born in a new fit. So um, even in, I'm still learning, you know, uh, all of my teammates, but, uh, but I think there is a really good connection and, um, and I think there is more to come. You know? You talk about that distribution. There's been some moments, not just with your feet, but with your arms to get things in motion. I mean, how, how have you introduced that into your game? And, when, and, and has the club said, if you see that, let's go. I mean, you get that ball, you see a pass you can make, and it seems like you can make most passes and even throw the very distance. Uh, how important is that for you to have that in your arsenal? Uh, you know, as a goalkeeper, you have the the possibility to to manage the tempo of the game you know and uh, and it's part of the, the the game reading so at some point you know you need to feel the game what's going on around you if um, if you feel that the team is ready to attack so you can play uh, quick you know or sometimes they need a rest so you need to keep the ball and and probably uh, let them breathe you know get a few seconds and then uh, playing again back from the back um, but that's managing your game, you know, uh, and um, so that's why it's really important to understand the, the players uh, around you. And um, but it's been really good so far. Even if we need to to improve our um, away from home performances, but at home uh, I really feel confident, um, you know, on and off the pitch because also the crowd is helping us a lot. What are the things that you would like to accomplish here? You've played, you started every game. It's, I, I would point out to you, it's very rare for a player to come from overseas and hit game after game. So you feel very comfortable. What are the things you would like to continue to work on as you uh, settle in even more with LAFC and Major League Soccer? Um, I'm just enjoying, you know, week after week. Uh, I think right now the... the <laughs> The main target is to win the game uh, away from home. <laughs> I don't look uh, you know, too far, but um, I really feel the potential of the team, you know, uh, and um, what it's the last performance show a bit what we are capable to do at a high level. Um, I'm not uh, surprised because when I see the quality uh, at uh, every single session that we spend together, uh, for sure, there is um, even more uh, to come. But um, you know, uh, in my career, I, I've never, I've never looked uh, too far. You know, I, I just uh, go game by game, and um, I know that um, the target is to reach the playoff. But uh, for me, we need to finish as high as we can. You know, in the, in the, in our regular season, and um, and then the playoff is a different competition. So it's. Uh, so, but really happy, uh, you know, to be part of this team, to be part of the club, and um, and you know, uh, I just uh, enjoy uh, being an LFC player, and, uh, and I try to deliver the best I, I can. Well, uh, Hugh, it feels like you were meant to wear that that shirt for LFC. It feels so comfortable. You've been absolutely wonderful with us and so many people. A couple of quick questions before we part ways. Big tennis player, have you been? Have you been hitting the courts here in Los Angeles? No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> No, yet no. Um, we can get a good doubles game going. Yeah, why not? Why, we need to organize it. <laughs> I'm not playing. I'm not getting on a tennis court with you, Hugo. When we spoke to you at the beginning of the season, we we got some footage of you playing tennis. I am not getting on a court with you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, 
we, we can we, we can organize you know uh, for sure we, we can be fun it can be fun good you mentioned that to us but that really helped your that has that gives you that helps your soccer game footwork etc playing other sports in particular tennis uh, so I, I grew up uh, mixing tennis and football and then I had to decide uh, when I was 11 or 12 years old so I was already uh, very early in my, in, my, in, in my life, but uh, I tried to carry on a little bit. Uh, but, you know, as soon as I started to be a professional player, I just play once a year and uh, I played probably one week a year uh, when I'm in the holiday. It's not enough. Uh, so the feelings are, are coming really, really fast. You know, they're coming back really fast. So after half an hour, I can feel uh, uh, the ball really well, but um, and then you need uh, you need to practice every day. It's a hard sport, uh, very mental, and uh, and uh, so you need to repeat and repeat. So, but yeah, uh, I will have plenty of time later. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, when you switched to football, it was. I'm curious, who were your your goalkeeping idols? Who were, I mean, there was something that drew you to football, a young player. Obviously, you were very good, but were there things that you said, that's what I want to do. I want to be like that person. So, <clears throat> um, or reference uh, at that time was the French national team, you know, who won the, the, the World Cup in 1998. So the goalkeeper was Fabien Barthez. Uh, so it's... Uh, He's known and worldwide, and he had an amazing career. And uh, so was the first, you know... Uh, I would not say idol, but uh, first kind of goalkeeper that inspired me. And then uh, obviously there was a, a generation of goalkeeper like Casillas, like Buffon, like um, Buffon. Uh, I liked also Julio Cesar, Dida. Uh, I can mention a lot of goalkeepers, you know, uh, but mainly I would say Barthes, uh, Casillas, and, uh, and Buffon. You obviously. You've played in two World Cup finals, and we've talked to you about that. But do you remember the 98 final where you were? Remember that day? Yes, I was in holiday uh, in the south of France with, um, with my grandparents. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, was just crazy. Yeah, it was crazy in the country. <laughs> that, was a, that was one of my favorite finals. Fantastic. Obviously, it had to be a great moment for France. And uh, well, Hugo, we appreciate your time and we wish you the best of luck. In, uh, in Portland, Paul said he wants donuts next week. So I don't, you know, that's yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Every clean sheet, uh, yeah. It's uh, it's, it's the the is a donut, so, yeah, He's out so of control. I need to do it for Paul. Yeah, otherwise, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he will not be happy. <laughs> Hugo Loris, goalkeeper of LAFC, joining us here on Inside LAFC podcast. We appreciate you tuning in every week. A reminder to rate, review, download, subscribe, tell a friend, check us out where you get your podcasts also here on YouTube and on Apple TV. We'll be back next week. Talk Portland and spin it forward as we head into the spring. So long, everyone.